Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, dear students. How are you? Uh, you know, uh, last time in last lecture we have studied about uh, uh, the neutron activation analysis, which uh, one is the key instrumental technique for uh, nuclear analyticals. Uh, we have studied about th the principle and its uh, related some uh, aspects. And uh, now we are studied about uh, uh, the kinds of uh, analysis related to the nuclear. A neutron activation analysis there are two main uh, forms a uh, particularly uh, actually we perform non destructive way but uh, there is also some kind of uh, destructive analysis involved in uh, neutron activation analysis and destructive in which uh, uh, the sample material no more remain intact and cannot be used further after analysis so in what condition actually this happens uh, the sample is chemically manipulated after bombardment but before counting uh, if chemical separations uh, are done to samples after irradiation to remove interferences or to concentrate the radioisotopes of interest the techniques is called radiochemical neutron activation analysis so there is some chemical uh, processes involved uh, just for the removal of in interferences uh, are to concentrate the particular type of radioisotope and to remove other all the isotopes uh, formed in after bombardment so due to this reason uh, the your chemical uh, nature of the isotopes uh, not more remain intact and it is uh, no more longer used for further uh, any other analysis so the resultant radioactive uh, sample may be chemically decomposed and the elements are chemically separated chromatography, ion exchange, extraction, electrochemical separation, all these are actually involved in such uh, processes. The other main kind of uh, analysis which actually uh, very important and uh, uh, formally used in uh, neutron activation analysis is non-destructive process. So this is another way it is also known as the instrumental analysis. The resulting radioactive sample is kept intact it is generally possible to uh, simultaneously measure more than 30 elements in most samples types without chemical processing so in this case i think there is a uh, uh, no pro uh, chemical processing involved because uh, when actually bombarded the sample material with the neutrons uh, all the element present in the sample get activated and uh, can be analyzed with the help of uh, and prompt gamma spectra and uh, delayed gamma spectra so it is uh, the beauty of this uh, instrumental analysis and uh, neutron activation analysis that uh, simultaneously more than 30 elements can be analyzed. The application of purely instrumental procedures is commonly called instrumental neutron activation analysis and is one of the neutron activation analysis most important, important advantages over all other analytical techniques. As you know, last time we have studied about uh, the fact that uh, there is a uh, uh, other t analytical technique, particularly the atomic absorption spectroscopy. At one time, we actually analyze only one kind of uh, element or uh, metal atom. But in case of neutron activation analysis, uh, this is the beauty of uh, this analysis: more than 30 element could be can easily uh, analyzed and detected. So, what type of uh, if summary involved uh, in procedure involved in the formation of uh, a process of neutron activation analysis particularly uh, as an instrumental way so first of all a uh, neutron source as i have discussed earlier there are three uh, neutron uh, sources one is a nuclear reactor other is isotope uh, alpha sources like that radium americium and beryllium uh, and uh, other th third one is gas discharge tube so these are the uh, different sources of uh, neutron activations but uh, uh, all of these uh, uh, are important but uh, neutron uh, nuclear reactor uh, give you a great uh, advantage over all other sources of uh, neutron because uh, the neutron produced through nuclear reactor having a great uh, flux as well as energy which have uh, more ability to activate the sample and target materials to give a comprehensive uh, prompt as well as the delayed gamma spectra to analyze qualitatively as well as quantitatively so other thing is uh, the sample material and uh, sample is uh, uh, you know last time i have discussed uh, with you the sample is uh, no more uh, required a comprehensive pretreatment 
there is a simple treatment like that a purification and uh, like that and uh, uh, so no uh, extra uh, dust and like particle not, uh, will not be present however uh, the sample preparation method that is actually we used in atomic absorption spectroscopy here uh, we uh, didn't use after a uh, bombardment of the over the sample material from uh, through uh, uh, neutrons uh, the activated sample is uh, detected so there are three uh, main detector which actually used in order to detect the uh, emission spectra from the sample material so these uh, spectra and these ionization uh, radiations are then amplified and uh, the data is acquisition system uh, after uh, used for the uh, amplified uh, radiations so in this uh, regard uh, here is this is called uh, adc uh, adc mean analog digital converter that actually give you uh, readable uh, results in the pc in computer so this uh, result could be printed for further <coughs> process okay so another way uh, there is a uh, uh, sampling material sampling sampling you know I, a lot of time i have discussed with you and uh, there is no such type of uh, uh, preparation required uh, uh, which actually we use in uh, atomic absorption spectroscopy uh, but here is a very simple uh, a process of involved uh, for the preparation of sample material just a purification or a cleaning of the sample material so a neutron activation analysis can perform non-destructive analysis on solid liquid suspension salaries and gases without no or minimal uh, preparation due to the pre penetrating nature of uh, incident uh, neutron and uh, resulting gamma rays the technique provides a true bulk analysis so this is a very good because uh, there is uh, no uh, uh, particular type of uh, system is required just uh, you have to bombard it with the uh, neutron uh, neutrons so penetration power of neutron is very high so it is uh, uh, no specific uh, preparation involved any type of sample uh, shape it is accepted in uh, neutron activation procedure process so pre irradiation sample treatment such as cleaning drying or ashing uh, pre concentration of element of interest or elimination of uh, interfering elements subsampling and pa packing these are the some usual uh, uh, procedure that actually involve in each type of sample material uh, when you are going to analyze it through any type of uh, analytical technique so other thing is uh, radiation after uh, pre irradiation sample treatment irradiation uh, you irradiation mean you actually bombarded the sample material with uh, neutron or gamma photons radiochemical separation then there are two ways uh, to analyze uh, uh, either through radiochemical separation if you, uh, you want to concentrate your uh, required as uh, isotope and other ways if uh, you want uh, uh, to just analyze uh, what type of elements are there and uh, how much uh, quantity then uh, there is a simple uh, instrumental measurement is uh, uh, sufficient so after that elemental concentration uh, calculation uh, were performed with the help of uh, uh, nl required data and obtained data so so irradiation irradiation is uh, carried out with the help of uh, two ways as you know one is a photon and other is the a uh, neutron there are several type of neutron sources uh, reactor accelerator and radioisotope neutron emitter which actually used in this uh, in process but uh, nuclear reactor with their uh, high flux of a uh, neutron offer the highest available sensitivity for most elements so most neutron energy distribution are quite broad and consist of three principal uh, components one is thermal epithermal and fast neutron if it uh, out of these three kind of a uh, neutron thermal process is much better because it give a uh, high flux of a uh, uh, neutron with good energy so there are three kinds of uh, uh, neutron sources as uh, discussed uh, earlier one is uh, uh, the uh, you know a nuclear reactor other is a uh, uh, alpha meter particles and third one is a uh, uh, gas discharge tube so out of these uh, an actinide such as uh, uh, californium 
californium uh, which emits neutron through spontaneous fission so uh, this type of uh, element is not uh, sufficiently good because uh, s uh, emission is spontaneously and no one know uh, at uh, what uh, time it will emit the neutron and with what is the flux of the neutron so it is uh, not uh, a trusted one other is a neutron generator and the third one is a, a nuclear reactor neutron generator is also very important but uh, uh, you know uh, we uh, in order to give high sensitivity and accuracy we need some kind of uh, high flux and good energy of the neutron but in case of neutron generators particularly uh, accelerator li like that uh, they almost give uh, you less flexed uh, neutrons due to this reason they are uh, less uh, used in a neutron activation analysis but if we see about the nuclear reactors it is a, a very humble and very good pretty good technique very pretty good source of the neutron which give uh, you neutron with all required uh, conditions and uh, demands uh, for the required for the NL, uh, neutron activation analysis so in this regard neutron nuclear reactor give you high flexed uh, neutron high energetic neutron uh, with a good speed so an alpha source such as uh, another source which is used for the uh, production of neutron is uh, uh, alpha source uh, such as radium uh, or uh, americium uh, mixed with beryllium this uh, uh, generator neutron by uh, alpha carbon 12 <coughs> plus neutron reactions so in this regard this is a chemical process uh, alpha is bombarded with this kind of uh, beryllium uh, it gives you carbon 12 and give you neutron so this is another source another source is a gamma source mixed with the beryllium so gamma is energy which is uh, transferred to the beryllium atom or deuterium atom the gamma radiation induced neutron emission is uh, this process is known as gamma radiation induced neutron emission so with the uh, exam point of view all these aspects are very important you should know all these terms and uh, should know what type of processes is there and what is the particular name of that process uh, for the production of a neutron and any other thing for beryllium or from beryllium or deuterium so uh, when a gamma uh, emitted uh, radionuclide is uh, mixed with the beryllium or deuterium the gamma radiations absorbed by beryllium which uh, become energetic and after this energy uh, gaining the energy it produces the neutron <coughs> so this is a, a process through which uh, the neutron is produced so these are the different sources through which neutron could be produced but uh, keep in your mind the most important is uh, the nuclear reactor process so if we see about uh, the uh, compared all these production of a neutron there are three main kind of a neutron one is a thermal other is epithermal and third one is the fast neutron if we see about uh, uh, this uh, graph there is a uh, relative neutron flux so highest flux is associated with the thermal uh, neutron and uh, uh, in moderate way epithermal and then fast uh, flux is uh, obtained but if we see about uh, this is uh, less energetic as compared to the uh, fast flux and uh, but uh, it have a uh, very low flux so actually flux is very important because uh, flux uh, give you uh, we have discussed in earlier that uh, main thing is that the flux if a uh, neutron have a great flux then it uh, the accuracy as well as the sensitivity of the neutron activation analysis also very good so almost uh, in all cases of uh, uh, analysis thermal neutron are the most favorite one the third thing is that uh, uh, detector used in uh, neutron activation analysis so what type of uh, detector actually we using used in a uh, neutron activation analysis because uh, you know uh, it should be uh, in your mind that uh, what actually we going to measure uh, so then we will decide what type of detector we will use uh, it should be in your mind when actu actually we are bombarded the uh, uh, target material and th due to the targeting the uh, target material by neutron and uh, the your component your target your element get uh, activated and uh, destabilize and in order to become uh, stabilized they emit the radiations in the form of gamma radiation there are two type of gamma radiation you know one is prompt gamma radi radiation and another is a uh, therm uh, sorry delayed gamma radiation so both are the radiation in order to measure the radiation you have studied in your uh, previous lectures scintillation uh, detectors are the favorite one in order to measure gamma radiation like that <coughs> so 
one thing uh, the first detector is scintillation type detector the other is semiconductor type detector and third one is a gas, uh, gas ionization type detector if we see about the gas ionization detector you have studied in previously gas tube uh, using the gas tube and uh, radiation is passes through the uh, gas ionization type detector it uh, Analysis the gas and collection of uh, electron and like that uh, gives you a current and which is actually measured indirectly the concentration and deflects and the uh, detect uh, radiation uh, uh, burden uh, uh, of the material. So gas ionization detector you know and we have studied in very detail a uh, giger moller counter also type of gas ionization detector you know. So there are two other detectors that is known as scintillation type detector and semiconductor type detector. Uh, so we will uh, see what is the semi scintillation type detector. So it is uh, also very common detector you also have studied in the form of uh, spec camera also as gamma camera which is uh, commonly known for you. So scintillation type detector means radiation uh, when falls over uh, some type of uh, uh, scintillation material like that sodium iodide uh, uh, docked with thallium and give uh, you an electron or uh, some uh, kind of uh, uh, lights in uh, photons which actually collected with the uh, by the photomultiplier tubes and like that and these photomultiplier tubes uh, uh, produce current and which is amplified and get the result so use a radiation sensitive crystal most commonly thallium dot sodium iodide is used which emit light when struck by gamma photons these detectors have uh, excellent sensitivity and stability and a reasonable resolution so it is the most commonly used and very excellent one so uh, you can say that uh, this one is a good detector and because it is also used in order to scan the human bodies uh, when it's a uh, human body is injected with some kind of radioisotope and radio pharmaceutical for the detection of uh, med and uh, diseases inside the body so this camera and such type of uh, uh, crystals are uh, used as a detector system other is uh, de detector uh, semiconductor type detectors uh, this is uh, also uh, utilized in the uh, detection of uh, radiations uh, so you utilize the semiconductor element like that germanium is a semiconductor element silicon okay silicon is a semiconductor element but uh, germanium is the most important here so germanium is a, a process to form a positive intrinsic a negative a diode so and uh, when cooled to uh, mine, uh, about 70 degrees kelvin by liquid nitrogen to reduce dark current and detector noise produce a very s a signal which is uh, proportional to the photon energy of the incoming radiation so in this regard this system uh, also uh, offer a good uh, result uh, but uh, in order to maintain th the conditions is somewhat uh, another way somewhat uh, 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 you can say that a uh, burden over the workers uh, to maintain at uh, about 77 degree kelvin by liquid nitrogen to reduce dark current there are two types of a uh, germanium detector the uh, lithium drifted germanium uh, in which uh, lithium is uh, Dobbed and other is the high purity uh, germanium or uh, HPG high purity germanium. The semi conducting element uh, silicon uh, may also be used, but uh, germanium is preferred because germanium has a good uh, semiconductor property as compared to the silicon. Because silicon, uh, 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 in which uh, this nu nucleus of the silicon attracts more electron toward itself as compared to the germanium. So, in germanium, uh, there is a somewhat uh, a good uh, balance between uh, of uh, interaction between the neutron uh, uh, electron and uh, the nucleus so it offers a good way of uh, semiconducting as its higher atomic uh, number makes it more efficient at uh, stopping and uh, detecting high energy gamma rays both germanium uh, and uh, high purity germanium detectors have excellent sensitivity and resolution but germanium lithium detectors are unstable at room temperature with the, the lithium drifting into the intrinsic region uh, ruining the detector the development of uh, undrifted high purity germanium has overcome this problem so this is uh, the one way solution in order to maintain its uh, uh, you can say that uh, uh, 
uh, sensitivity as well as efficiency so undrifted uh, high purity germanium is being uh, used so what is the detection detection uh, of the gamma radiation that is uh, emitted by the uh, sample material is uh, also known as gamma spectroscopy uh, so uh, this is uh, also no, if uh, someone asks you uh, what do you know about the gamma spectroscopy so it should be uh, there are two ways uh, anything uh, we actually perform for the detection of uh, uh, gamma spectra gamma radiation spectra of element of any element of any element that is known as gamma spectroscopy however there is a gamma spectro a gamma radiation sources may uh, the origin of a gamma uh, radiations uh, uh, maybe you uh, have different sources like that uh, in case of uh, uh, sometime uh, just uh, you uh, perform a uh, fission process inside the reactor and uh, as a fission process there are so many elements uh, radioisotope produced and uh, some of the radioisotope uh, uh, get a beta decay process and then as a beta decay process uh, produce gamma radiation you can easily measure the gamma spe uh, radiation spectra of that element and uh, further analyze it another way gamma also gamma radiation also involved in after the irradiation of the sample material with neutron activation so due to this activation process by neutron a gamma radiation also emitted so a me measurement of these gamma radiations also known as gamma spectroscopy so a gamma spectroscopy a uh, very simply we can say that it is uh, just a measurement the discrete spectra of a uh, gamma radiation uh, being emitted by uh, different radio isotopes so these are the peaks and uh, uh, this pattern of uh, gamma spectroscopy so in this regard uh, you would be able to uh, calculate qualitatively as well as quantitatively so detect the gamma rays a uh, prompt and delayed with the gas detectors scintillators and semiconductor so uh, these are uh, this is known as the gamma spectroscopy and this is a gamma spectrogram <coughs> So these are we have studied. This is an assembly of the gamma ray spectrometer uh, in which uh, just uh, this is uh, uh, the semiconductor way, uh, gam uh, sorry gas uh, tube way in which uh, you can see that gamma radiation when falls over the uh, gas inside the tube, it produces uh, some sort of uh, uh, free electron that collected at uh, anode and uh, further it produces current and that is measured through different uh, processing and give you some display this is uh, uh, you can say that uh, simply instrumental process all the uh, uh, things are being uh, uh, shown here uh, if you see here there is a multi channel a pulse height analyzer and then this is a graph which is uh, uh, definitely obtained through computer and printer so this is a multi channel analyzer this is a detection system and this is a uh, you can see that about uh, the voltage control and processing unit and printing system okay so there are two uh, uh, when we get some sort of uh, analysis uh, and we get a uh, result uh, in the form of uh, some uh, chromatogram we can uh, easily detect we can easily perform qualitative and quantitative analysis so qualitative analysis mean uh, first of all stage one bombarded for a fixed time in order to uh, activate the sample material then uh, allow it to, to decay for a particular time so that it may cool down to be analyzed uh, easily without uh, uh, risky exposure to the uh, workers and the third stage is that regarding the spectra as we have studied uh, in previous uh, uh, slide here we have recorded the spectra and this spectra can be used in art for the qualitative and quantitative analysis so when we are uh, discussing talking about the qualitative analysis so we should uh, know that uh, the energy of emitted photons radiation is characteristic of uh, the change in nuclear energetic level of our particular nucleoid it should be in your mind each nucleoid nucleoid mean either it is of uh, same element and uh, nucleus are different element nucleus so all the uh, different nucleus is having different uh, 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 mass numbers but uh, similar uh, atomic numbers these are also called nucleides 
so up till now you know uh, we have uh, discussed with you about uh, 800 uh, 3000 nucleide have been discovered out of these about uh, 278 uh, uh, nucleide are stable and uh, rest of uh, the unstable so if we see about all these things all these nuclide have a particular type of uh, uh, nucleon setup inside the nucleus so definitely when they have particular type of setup inside the nucleus they will have a particular type of energy uh, gaps between the uh, neutron as well as proton nucleons shells <coughs> So definitely they also produce the energies which is particularly related to the that particular nucleide. Emission occur at discrete energies which can be used to identify the emitted nucleide. So definitely when energy is released from such type of uh, nucleides uh, uh, which are actually activated and uh, actually these are the discrete uh, so line spectra is formed due to this reason uh, what happened each line spectra is a per, uh, uh, associated with a particular type of nucleoid and it never be uh, overlapped with never be similar to any other nucleoid. So in this regard we would be able to identify the particular type of uh, nucleoid. Peak energy is uh, thus used for qualitative analysis. So peak energy give you which uh, type of uh, element is there in other, in other words uh, compare gamma ray spectra of sample with those of known nucleides for qualitative analysis. So uh, under the same condition when you are going to uh, analyze uh, some sort of your uh, sample materials unknown sample materials and similarly you also hold uh, a sample of a known material which actually you want to analyze in an unknown sample material so both if the uh, the spectra that actually uh, you uh, uh, definitely uh, will get the spectra of your uh, uh, known s uh, element so if uh, this similar type of spectra appear from unknown uh, material it will give you a qualitative analysis the, your particular and your required and your uh, uh, particular type of element also present in unknown sample material the other is quantitative the next step is if it is present then how much it is present so peak area is uh, used for quantitative analysis basically there are two standard uh, standardization method used in neutron activation analysis in order to get a quantitative uh, uh, process so there is a relative method and non-relative method in relative method uh, definitely uh, you uh, use again standard material so strand uh, and if you use standard material uh, of a known concentration and uh, in this regard you will get a particular type of uh, uh, peak area so uh, definitely you will compare it with uh, your standard um, peak area and it will give you directly the concentration number of nuclei so the sample and element standards are simultaneously bombarded with the neutron and later uh, measured under the same condi counting conditions so if you maintain the same counting condition so, uh, then it is directly uh, involved in the measurement of the nucleide of unknown sample material uh, using uh, the known sample materials sample to detector distance uh, sample size uh, composition uh, is possible normally a single standard is used for quantitative analysis so it is uh, not um, a condition that you will use if you have ability to uh, uh, measure 30 element at a time and you also use the 30 standard no no, no it is not a case you have to at a particular type and one time you will use only one standard material a direct proportionality can be assumed between the peak area and number of nucleide when equal irradiation time and neutron flux are used so if you are using the equal irradiation time and neutron flux uh, for the for targeting the sample material and uh, your uh, standard material then uh, you definitely know how much nucleide you actually uh, uh, putting there for uh, measuring uh, the a spectra uh, of uh, your known uh, non material so if uh, from this uh, uh, peak area you can easily calculate uh, the uh, uh, number of nuclide of unknown sample materials the relative method uh, prom promises the highest accuracy when the standard and sample matches each other uh, well in composition irradiation and counting condition so these are the uh, some conditions if all these matches with each other uh, between your sample material as well as standard material then accuracy and sensitivity is very 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 excellent 
so what are the advantage of uh, uh, this technique high sensitivity uh, because uh, as we have studied about uh, the atomic absorption spectroscopy have no high sensitivity because uh, this is a limited range in which you can measure the uh, atomic elements or atoms or metal atoms and um, but uh, after that you will never uh, be able to detect the concentration and amount of uh, the particular type of element particularly in when the amount of the element in very low 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 levels multi element analysis it provides uh, uh, at a time more than 30 element it should be in your mind because uh, you should uh, keep kept in your mind how many element could be analyzed one time uh, through this technique other is non destructive destructive technique pre signed accurate a uh, low amount of sample required in order to measure because uh, you know if there is only one wing of a uh, 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 fly you can easily calculate you can easily detect you can easily use for the analysis of different elements a minimal sample pre treatment required the relative freedom from matrix effects and uh, interferences simultaneously detect all elements in the sample time efficient for analyzing many sample so it is uh, definitely time uh, efficient uh, <coughs> for the analysis of different sample materials so disadvantage uh, if uh, we uh, see about the what are the disadvantage for analysis of long lived uh, nuclide is uh, time consuming definitely if uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, nuclide is produced uh, through this process which have a long life in years so it is uh, not possible to uh, analyze it uh, for a, uh, a long time irradiation sample remains radioactive for a period of time uh, definitely uh, when you are using uh, to irradiate the sample material for analysis it will be a uh, def uh, release the uh, radiations for a long time and it somewhat it is uh, not uh, usable in a freely uh, mode without any precautions interferences may occur uh, when elements uh, present in the sample have near the same half life period so it is possible a uh, half life uh, uh, could be uh, similar with other uh, one of one nucleate to and other nucleate uh, but energy is not uh, similar it should be in your mind half life uh, is a different as uh, way and uh, because it is a decay process uh, it is not related with the energy energy is another energy is related to the setup inside the nucleus of uh, uh, nucleons so that that depends on the orbitals inside the nucleus of proton and neutron uh, but uh, uh, decay process is not uh, associated with this way so half life uh, may be similar so due to the if there is any nucleus which have a similar half life uh, or elements and uh, uh, isotopes present in the sample materials which have similar half life so interference may uh, be possible yes uh, what are the application application it is a long range application of uh, 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 neutron activation analysis it has a wide application in agriculture anthropology biology chemistry geology and medicine extra and uh, uh, forensic sciences so there is a uh, what actually you are thinking in which sector you think uh, application of neutron activation uh, can be possible analysis of bullets paints glass metal soils rare earth elements extra uh, 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 revelations of uh, uh, guns shot uh, residue uh, in uh, uh, forensic sciences is also possible neutron activation analysis techniques used for the uh, revealing uh, mineral and um, gun shot res residues documents may be examined for analysis of paper clay uh, filling materials used in paper manufacturers so dear students uh, these are some applications uh, inshallah in next lecture uh, i will give you some um, application that actually performed practically and uh, let's see how it is uh, possible uh, for a different uh, for neutron activation analysis to analyze different kind of element in different sample materials which actually not possible with uh, unique uh, usual uh, analytical techniques to measure the different kinds of elements and uh, uh, metal atoms inside the sample material so see you again inshallah next time if you have any question let me in order to uh, answer you to clarify your concept allah hafiz